companies go bust. It's a fact of business. Can't pay your bills, can't meet your commitments, then you're out. But what do companies get wrong that sends them bust? The possible reasons are many and varied. Incompetence, inadequate performance measures, poor judgment with respect to growth, poor business models, dishonesty, bad management, all of which can contribute to the good old classic company killer, negative cash flow. Every company needs access to cash to buy goods and services it needs to pay for day-to-day -day operations to meet its commitments to survive. And the best ways to generate positive cash flows? Simple. Make sure you sell your wares at a profit and then get your cash in from customers in a timely manner. So at the very least, you can keep on top of your bills. But if you want to grow your business and your profits, you need to ensure you're generating cash flow surpluses to finance those growth plans. Get any of these basics wrong and you're asking for trouble. And one company that broke the golden rules of operational cash flow was OneTel. Two examples of things the company was getting wrong which negatively impacted their cash flows. One, a large proportion of their revenue was provided on credit. This isn't necessarily a problem for a company, but in OneTel's case, they failed to effectively screen their customers for credit worthiness. The result was that one third of their receivable accounts were put at risk. Two, to boost their customer numbers, they provided a service called Chat Time, which allowed subscribers to chat to each other at a discounted rate. It was certainly a popular service. The problem was that they were charging their customers less for this service than they were paying their own suppliers to provide it. Basically, they were selling one of their day-to-day -day services at a loss. Not very helpful to the company's cash flow. But why would a company do this? What were they hoping to gain? The simple answer is sales volume. It was the driving force at OneTel. The employee reward scheme used sales volume as the key performance indicator. The problem was that this emphasis on sales volume and not profits had a profound effect on the company's culture. Why worry about the quality of customers you're signing up and their ability to pay if it's going to impact on your bonuses? Executives were also rewarded on sales volume, so even at the top of the company, the focus was not on profitability. And their loss leader approach was also a huge gamble. The theory was they offered one service at a loss and hoped that this would be more than compensated for when customers used the more profitable services that OneTel offered them. But there were no guarantees that this would work. Marketing and promotions were coming up with wonderful ways to attract customers. The trouble was that it appeared that nobody was working out the impact that these offers would have on the company's revenues and expenses. And judging by their bottom line, the impact was rather negative. Maybe one till believed that they could make significant profits out of this flawed customer base and marketing tack once they had built their own network and transferred customers to it. Or maybe they were hoping that their extraordinary subscriber growth would attract the attention of a competitor who would be prepared to acquire them at an inflated market capitalization. This was certainly happening to other companies around the world. At the time, resellers and small telecoms providers were being acquired by the industry giants for the equivalent of hundreds or even thousands of dollars per subscriber. So this was a real possibility. But whatever the reason, the management was certainly taking a large gamble. The surprising aspect is that shareholders and other interested parties still seem to believe that the company would succeed in the long run. Why weren't they recognizing the danger signs of an impending corporate disaster? Hindsight is a wonderful thing, but ignoring the basics is a recipe for disaster. So, if you're going to invest in a company, what questions should you be asking? For one, does the company have a strong core business? The statement of cash flows for both 1999 and 2000 seemed to indicate that one tell didn't. Secondly, are the company's operations strong enough to support its growth ambitions? The answer in one tell's case was an emphatic no. The way it was managing growth broke all the rules. For instance, OneTel was attempting to significantly grow the company at a time when it was operationally weak. 
At the most basic level, revenues were less than expenses. This was compounded further in mid-2000 when its billing system was down for six weeks. The ramifications of this were horrendous for their cash flows. No bills were sent out, so no cash was coming in. Despite this, cash still had to go out to pay staff, suppliers and other commitments. And even when the bills did start going out, they were often wrong and, of course, very large. Many good customers were furious and refused to pay, and they already had a large percentage of bad customers who would never pay. It was a mess. So what was keeping the company afloat? Why were investors not running for the exits? And how is OneTel financing its growth plans, if not from profits? How on earth had they managed to find the funds to pay $525 million for Spectrum licenses even when they were losing nearly $170 million in a year? The third section of the statement of cash flow shows us the answer, shareholder funds. During 1999 and 2000, OneTel had successfully raised over $800 million from share issues and over $100 million in borrowings. Remember the market was still gripped by dot-com and telecom fever at this stage and many naive and experienced investors were frightened about missing out on golden investment opportunities. And despite the obvious operational issues, the company's share price had performed extraordinarily well. Consequently, a lot of investors had jumped on this bandwagon even as the wheels were obviously falling off. So despite losing nearly $170 million on operational activities and spending nearly $615 million on investment activities in the form of plant equipment and spectrum licenses, OneTel was still able to claim a positive cash balance by the year end 2000, courtesy of shareholder funds. The promise of imminent profitability by the directors combined with the ability to show that they were still cash positive seems to have been enough to persuade many experienced finance professionals, auditors and stakeholders that things still were too bad and that the future was rosy. And yet, if they'd remembered the basics and correctly read the statement of cash flows, they could have seen that the signs of an imminent corporate disaster were there. Significant operational weaknesses, an aggressive growth strategy that couldn't be financed by profits, high proportion of bad debts, negative operational cash flows. Make sure you learn and never forget the basics. <laughs>